The Seven was first built by Lotus after it was designed as a lightweight car fit for the road and racetrack by their owner, the moustached genius Colin Chapman. When Chapman decided to discontinue the car, one of his employees, Graham Nairn, bought the rights to it and named his new company after the location of his first showroom so customers could always find him. And it worked. Catering Cars is approaching its 50th anniversary. We have tried to keep the product as close to the true original of Colin Chapman's back in the late 50s. It's lightweight, agile and fun. Not only is this charming and evocative British vehicle still in production, it's selling more cars than ever before. Like every seven ever made, each Caterham is handcrafted with a small capacity four-cylinder engine driving the rear wheels. A simple space frame chassis and a body still made from a mix of aluminium and fiberglass components. Every single Caterham that rolls out of here has soul and it has pride because there's been so many people involved in it and so many people keen to make sure it's perfect for our customers and the customer gets their pride and joy delivered the way they expect it. With the average Caterham packing as much power as a tractor but weighing the same as a pony, performance comes in a small package. I think it is the sheer power to weight. There's not many cars nowadays that are as lightweight as the Caterham 7. So our performance per tonne is probably better than any other car in the market. By the 1980s, production of the 7 had outgrown the HQ in Caterham, and the cars are now built by 34 craftsmen and women in Dartford, Kent, with a team of 20 hand-building the chassis in Westbury, Wiltshire. Every car is, is different. I mean, uh, is, there's no two cars I think we build the same. The options are pretty much from any colour um, on the outside to the inside, different wheels, different engine specs. We do two different size cars. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much infinite what, what you can have. Even the slowest seven can reach 60 miles per hour in under seven seconds. And it's this rapid acceleration that makes it the default choice for drivers who love the track. We got a repair shop here to fix cars as well, which is nice to see race cars. There's some coming in today, actually, so we had an accident over the weekend. The car in for repair belongs to Graham McDonald, Caterham CEO, and a man who's grown to love racing as much as his customers do by buying and competing in his own race car. I've always been a petrol head. My father raced cars when we were younger. Um, Caterhams have always been on my spectrum. And I love the fact that I raced them as well. Uh, you know, I'm reliving what my father did when I was a child and loving every minute of it. I've been through the whole experience. I've raced against my customers. I've clonked into some of my customers. And my customers have clonked into me. And we get out afterwards and we laugh and we have a beer and we shake hands and we get on with it because we love it together. We love to be out on that racetrack. Luckily for Graham, as each Caterham chassis is made up of the same components, repairing the damage doesn't mean rebuilding a whole new car. If there's serious damage to the front of the car, which could be due to somebody hitting you or you, you hitting somebody else, uh, normally we put on a new front, which um, is basically cutting here, removing this section, and then grafting on a new section here. Just the front part of the normal chassis, which is built in the same jig. If you can just fix the damaged part, it's a lot quicker, and they're back out on the track. That's my brother. Younger brother. I'll beat him up when he gets home. It's Because uh, it's such a small company, you find a lot of people have worked here with brothers, dads, mothers, mums, all sorts of stuff, so. If I'd ever needed help, he's, he's always there. And it's probably the same for him. That's a pro. The cons are he's got sticky fingers. My tools go missing on a daily basis. And I'll probably spend, uh, I would say, a good 20 minutes a day looking for my own tools. <laughs> and keeping car building in the family means sibling rivalry is as strong as ever. It's always a bit of competitiveness there, but I don't mind because I always win. We're always like peering over like, oh God, he's done a bit more than me. Go get it done. But brothers for you, I suppose. And But we never ever will go over 
try and try and try and do things faster than each other because the quality's got to be there at the end of the day. But if you fancy having a go yourself, Caterham cars are available in kit form, allowing you to do exactly that. So this comes with every kit, so it tells you how to build it. So this is here, this is all the people that work here have written comments in like hints and tips to save time building it if you wanted to build it from scratch and make it your own car sort of thing. And taking into account all the different options available for each car, there are a total of 5,000 different types of car parts in here. Even We've even got parts for old, old spec cars. So if customers phone up and say, well, I need a rear light cluster for an old spec, we've got it up here. But yeah, it's, it's absolute crazy in here. Absolute crazy in here. There must be millions of, millions of pounds of parts in here. All the correct components need to be dispatched as a complete kit. Oh, that's a car, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it, really, yeah? It's um, something to get your head around, really. Yeah, if you've got a big enough garage and you're into cake rooms, I, I'd recommend doing the kit. Um, you're, you're, you're saving money as well because you ain't got the um, labour on top. And if, and if at the end of the day, you built from scratch and not, I mean, it's your own car sort of thing, yeah, so. And making sure that happens is Tom and his trolleys. Grab an empty trolley, set all the boxes up, all ready for stuff to go in there, and then we just go from there sort of thing. Tom picks the parts for each kit, and the computer loaded with the customer's specifications tells him the correct ones to select. So that's all ready to pick now, all the parts have been issued and then we're ready to go to pick. So the first one, we've got to go to G6, so that'd be back there. So down here. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'd be G6, D4, and that's the hose. Cutters to cut the barrel hose. It's saying we want a meter. Or a meter. We normally give them more just in case they mistake, they do a mistake out there so they got stuff to play with. Picking the parts for one kit car by hand will take Tom up to six hours and... Roughly around about 15,000 steps a day. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of walking, a lot of walking. But it keeps me fit, one good thing. With his completed parts trolley, Tom's ready to box up and the pieces of this Caterham are ready to depart the factory. That's a complete kit now going to America and that's the Caterham way.